Today is my birthday. So to celebrate, we are tackling one of the biggest obstacles that Etsy sellers experience every single day. In a marketplace of over 5 million sellers, how the heck do you stand out on Etsy, even in a saturated niche? For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. Believe it or not, Etsy is a relatively equal opportunity platform when it comes to the ability for new sellers to find success quickly. In terms of the algorithm itself, new listings added on Etsy get a small boost in search in order to help Etsy understand how shoppers interact with these items, which is basically like a jump start from the Etsy gods. For more about the technical side of Etsy and how their search algorithm works, as well as how to take advantage of it, be sure to grab my free Etsy SEO toolbox up here. But even with amazing search ranking and visibility, your little listing still has to compete with all of the hundreds of other listings that land on a shopper's search page. And while things like good SEO, great photos, and unique products are all tips that we hear daily as sellers, if all of your competitors are also doing these things, you're still not really gaining a competitive edge. So in today's video, I'll be sharing three tips that can help you to actually stand out against your competition without utilizing sales tactics that'll land you in the negative, like underpricing for your items or keeping your shop perpetually on sale. Because come on, do you ever actually fall for tactics like this yourself? Before we dive into those tips, I just want to take a moment to give a quick shout out to this week's featured shop. Hey you, thanks so much for your love and support. For those of you watching, if you'd like to submit for your own shout out, just tag Handmade Alphas in a photo or screenshot of yourself watching this video, either in your Instagram feed or Instagram stories. My first tip is a basic one, but we are also going to dissect a few not so basic layers of this tip for those who may need a more advanced strategy. Tip number Number one is good photos, which I already said that we weren't going to cover, but hear me out. Yes, clear photos are a given. When you're competing on a search page, your images need to be clear. But clear does not mean objectively good, nor does your opinion of your own photos dictate what is actually good in the eyes of your shopper. For example, if you sell print on demand, you might say that the mockups provided by Printify or Printful are objectively good. They look clear and professional, sure, but often as a shopper, I'm overloaded with the same exact mockups in a search page being used over and over again. And to be perfectly honest, I've become desensitized to many of them simply because I've seen them so many times. In this instance, it doesn't matter if the photos are objectively good. Next to everyone else who uses the exact same photos, you aren't standing out. You're camouflaging, which is the exact opposite of being unique. And I understand this can be difficult, but it's important to consider if you're not seeing the sales that you want. You could order your own product samples to photograph or create your own mockups using some of the elements in Canva Pro. And this doesn't just apply to print on demand. Get creative with your thumbnails and try rotating them with different photos if you don't see the results from them. What you like may not be what your customers are actually willing to click on. So don't be afraid to experiment. Changing out your photos and thumbnails has no effect on Etsy's algorithm. Them. So test, test, test. Second, you need to brand yourself. And no, I don't just mean slapping up a logo and a banner. I mean really brand yourself. If you take a deep dive into the top million dollar shops on Etsy, what you'll find is something that goes so much deeper than just logos. These shops have mastered the art of becoming brands, and where businesses fail, brands succeed. But what the heck is a brand? And what makes it different from simply having a business? I could go on and on forever about brand psychology, but to keep things short and sweet, your brand is the emotional connection that someone ties to your business. And yes, logos, fonts, and colors contribute to this, but generically branded shops seldom perform as well as shops that have branded themselves based on the emotions that they want shoppers to feel. And everything contributes to your branding as a whole. Your banner, your logo, your profile photo, your reviews, how you speak to your customers, and even your social media presence all contribute to your brand. Brands that create emotions in their shoppers are the brands that we build fond feelings for, and they are the brands that we trust the very most. So if you're struggling to stand out, take some time to think about the emotions that you want someone to feel about your business. Then look at some of your competitors and try to identify what emotions that they're trying to provoke in their customers. You don't have to target separate emotions, but the more that you can differentiate 
differentiate the core of your brand from the core of theirs, the more likely it is that your brand will stand out. Because let's be real, how many shops have you seen with branding that looks almost identical to this? Again, the branding is objectively good, but it's camouflaged next to every other shop that looks exactly the same and who are likely selling the same types of items. Lastly, Etsy is like a terrarium where everyone gets the same little sections to fill out with the same little details and the same little pictures while all competing for the attention of the same little shoppers. It's a saturated marketplace, which is equivalent to releasing a rabbit into a den of wolves. The wolves are all competing for the one single rabbit, and meanwhile, the rabbit really isn't paying much attention to any single wolf. It just sees wolves. That rabbit is your potential customer, and those wolves are you and your competitors. But imagine how much easier it would be if you were a wolf in a forest alone. Not only would you have more freedom, but you'd also be able to set up your own den closer to where rabbits actually hang out without having to deal with thousands of other wolves crowding in on you and stealing your rabbits. That forest is your social media, and I'm specifically picking on Instagram because I personally feel that it is one of the best platforms to form a connection with customers in a way that actually builds your brand. And there are multiple reasons why Instagram works when used correctly. First of all, Instagram is amazing for brand signaling. It's hard to trust a random shop that you've stumbled across on Etsy, but by sniffing out their Instagram, you can get to know that brand a little better. Not to mention, seeing a responsive Instagram business account can help potential shoppers to see that you're legit and that you're there to help if something goes wrong. It's also a great way for you to personally connect with your shoppers so that they begin viewing you as a brand rather than just a shop with an Instagram account. For example, a shop with an Instagram account might post daily product photos and a few stories on their account with photos of items and links to buy them. But a brand Instagram account might host weekly fan Q&As in their stories. Maybe they share their inspiration for upcoming products, or they walk you through their process of product creation. A brand Instagram gives the unique opportunity to create a personality to go with the items for sale. Because people don't connect with businesses. They connect with the emotions and personalities tied to a business. They connect to the brand and the meaning of that brand. It's your job to come up with that meaning and to ensure that everything you do for your business ties back to that meaning. The problem with broad problems like the need to stand out in a saturated industry is that there are no quick and simple solutions to these problems. Otherwise, marketing agencies that charge millions of dollars for their services wouldn't exist. And as nice as it would be to have a perfect success checklist to follow, if one existed somewhere out there, it'd be just as easy for your competitors to find it too. The real hack exists within your own brain and your ability to take abstract concepts and apply them to your business. Nothing results in overnight success. But while your competitors waste their time looking for mystical success secrets and hacks, you can gain a competitive edge by focusing on building your brand brick by brick. And as always, I'm here every week to help you do it. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I recently released a free Etsy SEO toolbox that contains a step-by-step -step roadmap to follow if you need help with search engine optimization. So be sure to grab that if you haven't already because it's going to be a game changer for your overall visibility on Etsy. To summarize, success on Etsy isn't just about having a shop that looks nice. It's about building a brand that radiates trustworthiness and the exact emotions that you want shoppers to feel about your business. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky birthday beat.